Hi, friends. Sometimes any of you faced with a spark in the outlet when connect a very powerful household appliance to mains, and even the voltage drops in the mains are possible. This was noticeable in the era of incandescent lamps, when the lamp brightness decreased when a refrigerator or an angle grinder turned on. Electrical tools, power adapters of all devices, and most of the home appliances at the very beginning of connection to mains for a very short time consumes very high current. Its value can be tens or even hundreds of times more than their nominal operating current. This is called starting current, and very often the engine of your washing machine or the computer power supply goes out of order at the moment of being connected to mains. In the impulse power supplies, there are capacitors of large value. When we connect the unit to mains, these capacitors are charged with a colossal current, which needs to limit, otherwise it will be bad. Naturally, manufacturers somehow limit starting currents by applying thermal resistors, but this is not enough. The same happens with the engine of the refrigerator, washing machine, electric drill, and so on. They also quite often use some systems to minimize the launch problems. But given that the modern market is designed to increase sales, naturally, the quality of the components used in many devices is very low. Thin wires, which used for the windings of engines, often burn out under large starting currents, and electronics is not eternal. Today I suggest consider a device that will help to extend the life of any household appliance several times. In front of you, an external soft starter. This circuit provides a smooth start of a load with a delay. It is assembled on the basis of a relay. Yes, relay contacts aren't eternal, but they will serve for a few years exactly. The device is assembled on a compact PCB for easy installation into your electrical appliances. You can order a printed circuit board from our sponsor, the company GLC PCB, which is one of the leaders in this field. You will just download the PCB file to the website, put the necessary options, and that's all. The price for printed circuit board starts from $2 for 10 pieces. Order at GLC PCB. It's profitable, simple, and fast. The link is in the description. The input of the device through the switch is connected to the mains of 220 volts. To the output is connected the load, which must be protected. Here I should note the following. If this system is going to be used for the smooth start of power tools, you need to use the button on the instrument as a switch. This is important. When the switch is turned on, the mains current through the powerful current limiting resistors is applied to the load, for example, an electric drill. These resistors limit the current and the drill starts smoothly without jerking. After a while, the delay system is triggered and the relay contacts closes. Now the power to the load goes to the relay contacts by passing the resistors. By that time, our drill was already working, though it wasn't spinning at full speed. And now after the relay is activated, it receives full voltage from the mains. In other words, we slightly rotated the drill with a weak voltage, thereby eliminating the large starting current. Then we applied full voltage, and that's all. The same thing will happen if you connect a computer power supply to this device. First, the capacitors built into the power supply will be smoothly charged through the resistors. And once they are charged, the relay will operate and full voltage will be applied. And since the capacitors are already charged, the starting current is eliminated. 
At first, I didn't want to go into the principle of the circuit, but there are people who are interested in this, so we will consider the process in more detail. As already mentioned, when the circuit is connected to the mains, the power is initially supplied to the load through the limiting resistors. At the same time, the mains voltage through the limiting resistor and the ballast capacitor is applied to the start delay circuit. This part is a simple, transformer-free power supply. The output current of the circuit depends on the capacity of the capacitor. Then the voltage is rectified by the bridge and smoothed by a capacitor, in parallel to which a Zener diode and a high-resistance resistor are connected. The Zener stabilizes the output voltage at the level of 18 volts and extinguishes everything superfluous. The resistor discharges the capacitor after disconnecting the circuit from the 220-volt mains, providing a quick release of the relay contacts. Resistor R3 and R4 have a voltage divider. Through the upper resistor R3, the delay capacitor C3 is smoothly charged. When the voltage reaches to sufficient value, the transistor will open and supplying power to the relay winding. The relay will also work, and through its closed contacts, the main voltage will go to the load by passing the powerful resistors. A diode connected in parallel to the relay winding is for transistor's protection, since when the relay is open, the self-induction voltage from the coil can damage the transistor. Let's talk about the components. A 220 ohm resistor can be excluded and replaced by the jumper. C1 is the film capacitor with a voltage of 250 to 400 volts and capacitance from 0.33 to 1 microfarad. Other electrolytic capacitors should have a voltage of 25 to 35 volts. Capacitor C2 is used as a powerful filter and can be from 47 to 470 microfarad. The delay time of the relay operation depends on the capacitance of C3. The larger capacitance causes the longer delay and vice versa. Transistor. Almost any reverse conductivity with a controller current of 1 ampere. In my case, it's BD139. Zener diode has power 1 watt and stabilization voltage from 12 to 24 volts. The limiting resistors can be from 10 to 33 ohms, preferably 15 to 20 ohms. The current limit for the circuit can be calculated according to ohm's law. Relay is with a coil of 12 volts. The current of the relay depends on your needs. If you use a good 10 amperes relay, then you can connect loads with a power of about 2 kilowatts. Power tracks on the printed circuit board must be strengthened with solder. Well, everything was told and shown. So, if you like the video, please rate it, share with your friends, and subscribe to our groups and my Instagram. Links to the project archive with the circuit and the board can be found in the description. Also, there are links to purchase components for assembling the device and to ready-made soft start modules. Now, I say goodbye. Until new meetings, with you was Kassian TV.